Amen. Thank God for those who announced uh, which they let you know. Women have decided to do food, so they let you know about it. Uh, and we will let you know when Mother uh, Barbara's done, you know. We will let you know. It will be grave size. I just can pass that on to you later on. Just keep everyone in prayer. Praise God. And while you're singing a song, then we're going to turn it over to Brother Jeff. Come on, church, you don't look quiet. Amen. Come on. Help them here. Thank you. Help them here. Yeah. Not being moving. Go ahead. This song is going to be out there. Oh, she can't play and sing. She ain't got that good yet. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> get there. Oh. We're just going to sing You Are My Strength today. I think a lot of us need God to give us our strength on today because everybody's battling different things and you know, for Mother Barbara and her loss, praying for you and God give you strength as well. We just thank God for everybody and I thank God for keeping me again once again, you know, there's things battling in my body as well, but God is giving me strength to come in God's house and give him praise, and I thank God for what he's doing. So y'all come on and join us today, and we know that God is our strength on today. Amen. You are my strength. Strength like no
that's preached unto us. Thank you. Go ahead and pray.
Because it makes a difference whose side you on. Now. When Moses came down off that mountain, he thought that it was a cry of war, but they were down there partying and having a good time. They don't listen to it. Uh, the rest of them, Mike Sliders telling them, you know what, let's build a golden calf and let's worship it. And we're living in that time right now where people listening to the wrong spirit. They're telling people God ain't real no more. I don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible. He was just a man, but the devil is a liar. The Bible says you confess that Jesus will come in the flesh, you are God. If you confess that he ain't come in the flesh, you ain't a God. I'm going to tell you the devil is a liar. I know that he came in the flesh. The reason I know because he came in my flesh. Yeah, when I was a liar and a homebuster and a bite bite and a stealer, I'm telling you he came and set me free. Yeah, he put my feet on solid ground. Can I get a witness up in here what God has done to you? I'm going to know he's real. I'm going to know he's real today. Man, God is a good God. But if you listen to folks now, they'll never live in the whole lot. You listen to the wrong voice, you'll find yourself going down another road. Believing in another God. Believing in another religion. And all that stuff they're telling you about is dead. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm telling you, when you need a prayer through, you can pray to them dead gods. You believe in all you want to. You can pray <laughs> to Buddha, Muhammad, Fuchsia. You can pray to them much. You can, what, you can put on all the robes you want to put on. You can sprinkle all the water you want to sprinkle. Hell no, but you ain't going to get no answer. I believe Elijah began to tell him. He said, look at here. He said, you know what? I know a God that'll answer my fire. Hell no, you ever got to know a God that'll answer you when you pray to him? He'll come to your rescue. Glory! Excuse me, because I'm about to come out this thing in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know about nobody else. I feel the love of God shedding abroad in my heart. My pastor told me don't be long, so I'm going to try to be obedient. I'm going to try to now. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just go to the Lord and pray. We know these mad father, y'all. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done so far. The testimonies, God, because we know that you're real. We know, Lord God, that, Lord, we ain't seen nothing yet, God. Lord, we know, Lord God, that you're going to do great things in your people's lives. The world will be dumbfounded, Lord God, at the situations that you deliver your people out of, Lord. At the things that you do for us, God. Those that love you, Lord. Hey, glory. God, I thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord God. So you said, great is he that's on the inside of us than he that's in the world. You told us to let not our heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God, we don't have to fear today. Because like I heard um, Mother Betty say, you didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You love us so much, God, that you the one give us a sound mind. You told us to keep our minds stayed on you, Lord, and we'll have perfect peace. God, we're looking for perfect peace today. And all the way it's going to come is in you, Jesus. And Lord, as we come to you, Lord, we ask God that you forgive us, Lord God, right now. For every sin, every thought that's not of you, Lord. Bite, bite, envy, jealousy, strife, malice, Lord God, because you don't move and all that stuff, God. And God, as we come to you, we all in need, Lord. And we ask God, even me, Lord God, myself, Lord, first partakers, that you take everything, God, out of our hearts that's not of you right now. That you can have your perfect work, Lord, in each and every one of our lives. Because it's, it's us, Lord. It ain't just me, it's us, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. God, we need you. Different situations, we need you, Lord. And we know, Lord God, if we come to your humble, Lord, as we know how, God. Lord God. Oh, God, having a forgiving heart and forgiving others, God. Lord God, that you will forgive us, God. Lord, I pray that you give us right now our daily bread, God. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Right now, God. Lord, deliver us, Lord God, from the evil, Lord God. Lord, we know that you're able, Lord. You can't fail, God. That's one thing you can't do, Lord. You cannot fail. And God, we pray, Lord, that you help us today. As we reach out to you, Lord, as we, Lord God, fellowship in your word, Lord. Feed us, Lord. Feed your sheep and feed your lamb, God. Lord, cause us to come together as one, Lord God, all over the world, God. You told the disciples, Lord, you Lord, brothers and sisters are those that do the will of the Father, God. God, help us to, Lord, God, do what
Do your will. Help us to come in, Lord. Bring in the backslider. Bring in, Lord God, the sinner. Bring in those that's hopeless being two opinions, Lord. Don't let it be said too late, God. Lord, even as I was talking to one young lady, Lord God. Good Lord God, trying to get her to see the scriptures, God. When you told us don't strive with people, Lord God. But Lord, just give them the word and move on. And I was letting them know, Lord God, that just being out of, out of love, that grace can run out, God. But they told me, God, that grace will never run out for them, regardless of what they do. That grace will never run out. Lord, you are merciful, but we know, Lord, that there's a grace period, God. That your spirit ain't going to always strive with me. And God, I thank you, Lord God, that you gave us a chance, God. I thank you that you didn't let grace run out on us, God. And I ask, Lord, that you don't let it run out, Lord God, on a minute, Lord, Lord. That you'll open up their eyes, God. Free them, Lord, from the bounds, Lord God, in the chains, God. In Jesus' name, strengthen your people today, God. So many, Lord God, are on the verge of giving up. So many, Lord God, are weak, Lord God. And Lord God, just need strength today. Strengthen us, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we commit it to you, Lord, today. The remaining of the servant, we ask that you have your way. In Jesus' name, get the Lord a hand up and pray. Amen, amen. Amen. Where can I go? Oh, where can I go when I'm seeking a refuge for my soul? Yeah, when I'm
Shepherd of this house, we thank God for her. Give her a hand clap of praise. Home pastor, thank God for Sister Faith, and the song leader, musician. Thank God for all the earthly and sound men. We just thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for my spiritual family, my natural family. Thank God for my wife and children in the absence. I just thank God for everybody that's here today. When I realize you didn't just get up this morning and decide that you want to come to church. But God drew you here. Yes, sir. And he drew you for a reason. Yes, sir. But I realized too that you, the old saying said you can bring a horse to the water, but what? You can't make them drink. All you can do is put the water in front of them. But you can't make them drink. The Bible said they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They the one that's gonna be feeding. And I realized today that everybody ain't hungry and thirsting after righteousness. Some people hungry and thirsting after the world, but they'll still show up. Some people hungry and thirsting after fleshly things, but they still show up. Because they want to get that quick fix. You know, that's something about that's that's the way junk is on. I used to be around a few out there in the world. They were ripping, they were running, and this and that, but every now and then they'll go get a quick fix. Yeah. Once they get that quick fix, they go on about their way. But how many know you don't you can't get no quick fix when it comes down to Jesus? Yeah. You got to be fixed. Yeah. You got to have a real fix when it comes to Jesus. You got to be detoxed. Yeah. You got to go and rehab. Yeah. There's got to be a change in your life yeah. when you come to God. That quick fix ain't gonna get it. I heard Pastor say uh, some weeks ago, 99 and a half ain't gonna do it. And I realized that it really, really, 99 and a half. Jesus said he's coming back for a church without spot wrinkles or no such thing. That ain't my message, but I'm just throwing that out there because some people need to know that. Because I'm going to too many places where uh, people coming and sitting and getting too comfortable in the house of God. And then we living in a time, it ain't no time for you to get comfortable. And you can holler, I got money. You can holler, I'm doing good. You can holler, I'm, hey, ain't nothing wrong with me. Uh -huh. But the scripture says you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Yeah. You don't know what the next day going to bring. Yeah. But one thing about it, you better know who's on your side. Yeah. You better know that you got somebody that you can get some help from. Yeah. But right now, the doctor's failing me. Come on. I've been out to them hospitals. They all in the aisles and. I mean, no beds and people sitting up there can't breathe on Jesus, ventilators. And Jesus. I'm talking about they fooling everywhere and it's getting worse and worse. Yeah. But now it ain't nothing to scare you because you know it, you know God ain't you know we, we as children of God we ain't got to be scared because Jesus the one that's not need nothing. Yeah. But I tell you what, if you ain't living for God, you ought to be scared. Yeah. If you ain't got no protection, you ought to be scared. Yeah. And you know what God began to tell me in prayer this week? He said, "When you he said the heart is an issue." He said, people can sit up in church and have heart problems. Yeah. I ain't talking about your heart not beating and skipping beats and all that. I'm talking about deceitful heart. Yeah. Yeah. You can sit up in church yeah. talking about other people and all this and that, and at the same time you're talking about somebody, you still yeah. <laughs> That's why he said he sit up high and look down low. Yeah. I tell my family all the time, I ain't got nothing to do with other people doing their house. But you know what? I'm the priest of my house. Yeah. You know, I tell I tell the pastor sometimes, I say, I'm, I ain't trying to be nobody pastor, because I'm already a pastor. I pastor my house. <laughs> you know, I pastor my children. I pastor my wife. See, I ain't there with no monster like me and just let anything just go in my house. If I'm going to serve God, I'm going to serve God. I'm like Joshua for me and my house. We're going to serve God. Even when my, me and my wife get in conversation, about people and what this and that, we, uh -huh. hey, we cut it short right there. You know why? But we realize through experience down through the years that that stuff will cut your blessings off. Uh -huh. That stuff will cut God off from blessing you, keeping you. Uh -huh. That stuff will bring stuff on your household and all. Uh -huh. You can be deceitful all you want to, but God knows. God knows. It's time to get your heart right. Yes, it's time to stop throwing rocks and hide your hand. Yes, and then sit up in God's house, whether you in God's house or lying down the street on your job. It's time to get your heart right. Yes, sir. Preach it, preach it. Because it ain't no time, you know, we live in a time, it ain't no time for boost. No, no, no. Ain't no time for getting involved with that person ain't got no sense. They this and that. Come on, come on. If, if they do it, they do what the Bible says, even pray for your enemy. Yes, Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that yes, you and pass your name out. Yes, sir. It's up to each individual to know where they 
standing with God. I don't worry about what people think about me. As long as I, I worry about what he thinks. But he said, why fear man who can destroy the body? But fear God who can destroy your body and cast your soul into the head. But I realized, man, the little level level the whole lump. It's time to watch the company you keep. I don't care if your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your favorite friend, I don't care who it is. If it ain't, if, if, what the Bible says, your left hand offend you, cut it off. If that stuff offending you, if that stuff causes you to go to hell and lose your dedication and your salvation, cut it off. Whether it's on the phone, whether it's on the TV, whether it's on your job, and you're trying to go alive and be separated. But that's the time we living in now. It's time for separation. You know what? People don't want to be separated. No more. People want to have church. You know what? I, I, I preached a message one time. Church folks gone wild. I'm telling you, church folks gone wild. But see, that's just church folks. But God got a real church. But church folks, they just church. You know, they just like singing and shouting. And, and you know what? And just having a good time and being in the flesh. Yeah. Showing off and all that, but when it comes down to touching the throne, they don't know nothing about that. That's church folk. Going through the motion. Bible said they have a form of God. And deny the power. Man, it ain't no time. I, I wouldn't want nobody to build me no house and it ain't on no solid foundation. I don't want nobody to build me no house and then all this stuff happened to be like that building that happened down there somewhere. That 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 uh condominium fell to the ground. Because of the foundation. Yeah. It just got a form, you know what I mean? It just ain't no, you know, the Bible talk about untempered water oh, yeah. in the Bible. Oh, yeah. Untempered water, like when you build a house, you, it's, un, it's like untempered water. Yeah. They put all that, that, that clay, that mortar between them bricks, but they use an untempered mortar that don't get hard. Yeah. I mean, it just stays soft. Then the Bible says when the wind comes and the storm blows, and the rain is when trouble comes, that house can't stand. Right. Because the mortar ain't hard. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. We build in our houses with untempered mortar, some of us. Come on, preacher. And we feel like it's all right. Uh -huh. We don't strive to say, Lord, take this out of my heart. Take yeah. this out of my mind. Don't yeah. let me sit up in your house. Don't let me get around people that's just talking and, and gossiping all the time. And then yeah. people's business and all. But there's too much of that going on. Yeah. People still shouting and, and doing all that stuff over that stuff. Yeah. And they wonder why. This happened to that happened. Something happened for a reason. Yeah. We can call everything the devil if we want to, but everything ain't the devil. Yeah. Something is just God trying to wake you up. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get your attention to show you where you living at. You can put it on other people. You can put it on the devil. I, I, I had a track years ago. And I used to go out past that track and I ran across one that had me done by. They had the devil sitting up on a step looking like the step to the White House. He's sitting there and he's crying. And he, the devil just, the devil crying. The devil was just boo hoo and tears. So this man came I said, Mr. Devil, what's wrong with you? You know what the devil said? I'm tired of all these trips for lying on me. <laughs> <laughs> all these trips for talking about how I made them, they did that stuff they said. <laughs> but the Bible said, we, we, we tempted, we tempted by our own love. God don't tempt you. He said, we be tempted by our own love. This stuff that's already in us that God trying to get out. Yeah, yeah. And he said, we tempted by our own love. And all the devil got to do is blow it up, see. He ain't got to do nothing but the Just like you get them pictures on your phone and go down the wall by the web and blow them up and put them on your wall. Yeah. That's what the devil do. He walk by and he evaluates each and every one of us. He's the accuser of the brother. Yeah. He find that stuff in you, then he just blow it up. Yeah. Yeah. And after a while, everybody see just how pretty you are. <laughs> Everybody see just what's going on. Because oh, yeah. that stuff you try to hide, that production of stuff, it gets blown up. It sure does. It'll get blown up because the Bible says, show as you sin, it'll find you out. Yes, it'll find you out. Yes, be hot or cold. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. He said, be hot or cold. Yeah. Not move on. No. That's what I screw you out of you. Yeah. I tell true. people, don't stop coming to church just because you cold. Yeah. But get a mind that want to do right. Yeah. Get a mind that want to be saved. Yeah. Don't stop coming, because you stop coming and you give up, you're going to yeah. be lost. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Just admit I'm cold and I need some help. That's it. Man. And strive for that help. For God yeah. love us so much, it ain't about nobody again, nobody preaching on it. 
preaching on you, this and that, uh, is that God loves you so yes, much yes, sir. Yes, sir. and he hates when we sit back and let the devil take us out. Yeah. He hated when a sinner let the devil take them out. Yeah. Don't you know God cries and you know what? Saints supposed to be the same way. Uh, yeah. You're supposed to judge some people yeah. and backsliders because they get them a mess or because they you know, things happen in their life. You don't sit back and talk about them. You don't talk about them because they ain't in their right mind. You pray for them. God saved us to pray for the world. He saved us to pray for those that bound and going through and get caught up. Not to sit back and say, I told you, girl. The Bible says you give a ditch, you're going to fall in the same ditch. The one thing about it, most of the Bible and the, and the commandments, you know what most of that stuff is written for? It's written for the saints. Yeah. That stuff ain't written for the sinner, man. We try to put it all on the sinner. Sinner's gonna do what sinners do. Amen. Come on, man. But when God brings you in, He said we got to walk up circumspect. We do. Yes, sir. He said, why? You tell other people what to do, and then you turn around. They see you doing the same thing Amen. you said. You telling them not to do. You ain't no light. Amen. You know what that called? Thank you. Jeff called it a hypocrite. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you a hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> When you try to tell people what to do and you ain't living no kind of life. Mm -hmm. And then when you, if you living it, you ain't enough for you to boast in because you ain't doing nothing on your own. Amen. It's by the power of God. Yeah. Every one of us would be lost if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. Amen. If it wasn't for the strength that he give us. Yes, sir. Why not pray that God give the backside some strength? Amen. And he give that those that bound out there and still can't get free some strength. Amen. That should be our prayer. Yeah. It used to be a time we used to fast for something. We used to fast for back. Right. We used to push our plates back individually yeah. for people we know they lost. That's true. Not advertising, but we want to advertise. Oh, I fasted this many days and that. And the Bible said, when you do it, do that stuff, do it in secret. Amen. But it's a time, man. It, it's coming a time where God is taking. He said, judgment gonna first begin at the house of God. Yeah. God got to get the church right. And the church can have somebody to look up to. Come on. He got to get us right. Yeah. And the church is those that profess to be saved. He said, let every man that named the name of Christ depart from the midst. Mm -hmm. And now God exposing people that name his name yeah. for going down another path. Mm -hmm. It's a difference that you don't name the name. I used to be out there, man, and I came in years ago, and I was trying to uh, keep it together and do right. And all of a sudden, uh, I used to go back down there where them fellas was. I was smoking and drinking and stuff, and I had stopped for two or three weeks. But and then I come back, and, and I was still weak in my flesh, and I started back, you know, and drinking a beer down at the basketball court, and one guy walked to me and said, man, I thought you, you had got saved. I thought you had changed. Because the world watching us. But the thing was, I just started coming to church. I hadn't got saved yet. I was just so happy that I ain't do them things for two or three weeks. But I found out you can't do it without the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You can try to stop all you want to stop. And it's going to take Jesus. Yes, sir. And see, that's the thing I was telling some guys the other day when I was with us. These churches ain't preaching the Holy Ghost. They ain't preaching that there's a power that'll come on the inside yes, of you and change your life. I'm a witness. See, God made me a witness. I ain't got to, I ain't got to just talk about it. I can, I can mention it and I can be real about it because he did it for me. Amen. Anybody been saved in here, really delivered from something? Anybody been changed and you know that it wasn't about the power of God? You know how you would have been and how you was? Yeah. That's why he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say something. Amen. That's why he said, don't shut your mouth. Tell Amen. somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody that God is a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a way maker. He's a provider. There is so many names for God. In the, I think it's about 85 different names, whether you know it or not, in the Bible that God got. Just about anything you can name. That's why he told Moses, tell him that I am what I am. Whatever you, every one of us got different needs. Amen. And you know what? God got it. <laughs> he got it. Yeah. Whatever your need is, he just got it. Amen. Bill paying, deliverance, drugs, alcohol. It ain't just about drugs and alcohol and partying and drinking and smoking. Hallelujah. Hatred, jealousy, malice, covetousness. Yeah. See? God deal with all that inward stuff that people can sit up and camouflage. Yeah. Yeah. He deal with all of them. That's why he said, many going to stand before me. Lord, I did all them great works. Yes, 
I was singing for you in church. I was preaching for you in church. I went out there and fed the hungry all the time. And you better tell me you ain't gonna let me in. And he's gonna say, I know you not. You work of iniquity. What scripture said was a, a, the Republican and the sinner was standing there and he just bragging about yeah. all that stuff I do. Lord, I pay my tithes. Uh -huh. I do this. I pray three times a day. All the works he was doing. Sure. And the sinner just over there, Lord, help me. That's what's up. And the sinner went down more justified. Yeah. Man, ain't no sense in us thinking we do nothing because yeah. I of all our righteousness. And still a still the right. But you know what? I thank God he's so merciful that he looked down and he had mercy. And that he received us as his children. Yeah. He received us as his children. Yeah. But it's time to be real in the Lord. Yeah. Because I know that's what the devil using now. He using tricks where if he can bring anything in your life and in your heart, it can cause problems. Yeah. It can cause problems with you. Not only you, it can cause problems with your children. Sometimes we run it our mouth and do it all kind of stuff, and then we wonder why things ain't happening with us. <laughs> but God trying to get our attention. Amen. It's time to be real. It's yeah. time to lay aside everything. Yeah. If we, the Bible said, if we uh, uh, have one another down and do all this stuff, then we'll be consumed one to one of another. If we do all that. But when we love each other and we got each other back, man, the devil can't do nothing with us. Amen. When you love each other and care for each other, the devil can't do nothing with you. That's the time we live in. When God is trying to get our attention, not get our attention, he's trying to show us just how power we use in our life. Let's begin to pray for one another. Let's begin to realize God loves every one of us in It ain't no big eyes, ain't no little you because you preach, because you're this and that. That stuff don't mean nothing, God. Ain't none of us here to help you. I mean, know every one of us in here still striving. The saint, the sinner, and the backslider. Yes, we all still in our flesh and still striving yes. to get there. But what we need to do is address our problem. The Bible yes. says, make your calling yes. in election yes. school. Yes. Examine yourself. Not the next man. Amen. I tell people, I ain't got time to look over nobody else. Yes. I preach the word and tell people what God says, but I ain't running nobody down looking in their weapons. Uh -huh. And you know, and I'm running behind your car and trying to grab a hold to the hitch and turn it around. <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna do all that. All right. Like I said, I got little children I'm trying to raise up. I'm trying do, I'm doing all I can to keep me true. Yes, right. But the devil talking to me like he's talking to y'all. Yes, <laughs> he's trying to turn me around too. Yes, but you know what? I'm trying to do like the Bible says. I'm trying to grab a hold to the gospel. Plot. Yeah. I'm trying to keep plowing. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, keep on plowing. Yeah. Don't stop. Keep plowing. Get up your Bible. Let's go to the Word of God. Yeah. Like Pastor Ford said, we're going to lay a foundation real quick. Yeah. <laughs> real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Samuel, 22. God is a good God. Man, y'all just don't know how much y'all love us. How mm -hmm. he is. I think some of us do. Oh, yeah. We have from the testimony, yeah, a lot of us know. Mm -hmm. God is a good God. We don't serve no any kind of God. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad about it. I can brag on this God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things he has brought us to, oh, yeah. and the things he's still taking us to, I can brag on him. Oh, yeah. My God. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Jesus. 2 Samuel 22, let's begin at the 29th verse. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness, for by thee I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckle to all them that trust in him. For who is God, say the Lord, and who is a rock? Mark down. Who is God, say the Lord, and who is a rock? What? Say the Lord. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hands feet, and setting me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to walk, so that I bow so that a bow of steel is broken, what? By mine arm. Read with me. 
Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and the gentleness has made me great. Thy gentleness has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them, and returned not again until I have consumed them, and I have consumed them and wounded them, that they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go over to Joshua. Real quick, Joshua. Thank you, Lord. Somebody shout the Lord out of praise. Mm -hmm. If I was God, I could have received that. Somebody shout the Lord out of praise. Thank you, Lord. Joshua 1 and 9. Have not I commanded thee? Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is what? With thee, whatsoever thy goal. God said, I command thee to be courageous. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's go um, to Psalms 27. About there. Psalms 27. We thank God for each and every one. We thank God for our business. We thank God for all the testimony. Thank you, Lord. We're going to have some more for us over. Thank you, Jesus. This thing is just beginning. It's just beginning. God is with us. Thank you. 27, 3. Though in whole shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be what? Confident. Confident. Come on, let's read that again. Start at the third verse. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be what? Confident. Say it like it means. Confident. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'll be confident. It don't matter what I go through, I got confidence. That's saying something right there. Yes, no matter what phase you move out of going with your children in your home on your job, you still got confidence. Oh, yeah. You still smiling, you still laughing, yeah. you still testifying, you still singing to the glory of God while you're washing dishes and scrubbing your car, while you're cleaning the dog up, you still got confidence. Yeah. My God. That's saying something right there. Yeah. Woo. How many confident today? How many got confidence today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to need it. We're going to need confidence. Let's go to our main scripture. We're going to just stop right there. Uh, 2 Samuel. They have it say amen. amen. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shekar, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shekar and Ezekiah in Ephesus, Amon, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Eli, Eli, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the on a mountain on the other side. And there was a battle between them. 
And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines. Oh, God. And there went out. Huh? Oh, okay. My bad. First Samuel. Samuel. First Samuel 17. I'm at the fourth verse now. Did I say second Samuel? My bad. My bad. I guess what it is. My bad. <laughs> Let's start over again. First Samuel 17, chapter. You know that story. <laughs> now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Sakar, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shakar and Ezekiel and Ephes Dam. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Alpha, and set the battle array. They're getting ready to fight now. Set the battle array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain of the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a battle between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named what? Goliath of Gath. Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head with 600 shackles of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him, and a man walking in front of him with a shield. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in a raid? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me, if he be able to fight with me. And to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the arms of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were what? Dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that. Ephraim of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three elder sons, Jesse, went and followed Saul to the battle, and the name of his three sons that went to battle, we ain't going to pass him. And David going on the 14. And David was the youngest, and the three elders followed Saul, but David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep. Bethlehem and the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now thou thy brethren an alpha of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand and two. And look how thy brethren fast. See how they doing. And take their plate and take their plague. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Eli fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forward to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel, the Philistine, had put the battle in array, army against uh, in array, army against army. And David left his carriage carried in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren and asked and he asked and he and, and saluted his brother and he talked with them behold there came up the champion again he go go life again the philistine of gap goliath by, by name out of the armies of the philistine and spake according to the same words and david heard him now, David had heard what he said now since he came back. Just to find the army of the Lord. David heard them. And all the men of Israel 
when they saw the man fleeing from him, they began to run and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up and it come up. Israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, what shall do be done? What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel for it? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. And Eli, his elder brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eli's anger um, was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there no not a cause? And he turned from him toward another. He ain't talked to him no more. He ain't want to hear that foolishness. And spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when he, his words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed him before Saul, and he sent for him. And this is the part. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, a little old strony son. And he, a man of war from his youth, well put together, well experienced. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion in a bear, and took a lamb out of the rock flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose again, when he arose, uh, uh, when he arose again against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. That servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised, say it like it means, say uncircumcised, uncircumcised, this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go. Now he's sitting back in David. Saul was a big man. Saul was, was the biggest man in the army. He was tall, almost like a giant, but he, he running for fear. And he's supposed to be the leader. He's running for fear. And, um, and then um, Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. <laughs> and and Saul armed David with his arm, put his arm on David, yeah. and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail, and David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not what proved it. He had not proved that armor and the stuff that Saul put on him. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with thee. For I have not proved them, and David put them off him, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag, yeah. which he had he had even in a strip, and his sling was in his hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just gonna stop right there. We gonna just talk to you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to talk to you about. Goliath today. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you about facing your giants. Not just facing your giants, but killing your giants. 
God began to talk to me the other day about giants. He began to talk to me about separation. He began to talk to me about circumcision. So many things he began to talk to me about. But he began to show me about the story about David. He began to show me about the story about Saul. And as I began to think about the story about Saul and David, I began to think about how it tied in along with you and I today. We're living in a time where there's so much troubles in the land. We're living in a time where we got to pray for one another. We got to lift one another up, up in prayers. I begin to think at the house, I told my wife, there's strength in number. One thing happened to Eve that when she walked off and got by herself, the devil was able to talk to her. The devil was able to deceive her. The devil was able, the Bible said the man wasn't deceived, but the woman was. But that didn't give uh, uh, how so many people would try to try to uh, downgrade women because I realized that like there's an old song that they used to sing when I was out in the club. Uh, uh, that a man can't do nothing without a woman. I'm going to let you know that women play an important part regardless of how much people say or how much they talk about you. It's so much grace concerning a woman. I tell you what, if you think it ain't no a bunch of grace concerning a woman, you better not be no man that can't cook and clean. You better not be no man that don't know how to... Um, Fold them children's clothes and put them in the uh, put them in, <laughs> put them in the draw meat. Or take care of bills and take care of business. You better not be that type of man as you will find out just how important a woman is. Amen. Not just in the natural, but in the spirit too. Yeah. Man, it's something about I heard one scripture where he told him to call for the moaning women. Yes, sir. It's something about a real woman yes, sir. that when you can't get a prayer through, they praying in the midnight yes, hours when you sleep, talking about I'm tired, I've been to work all day. <laughs> but it's something about a woman. It's something about the whole body of Christ. That's why God put us together, a man and a woman, that each and every, each, both of us play a part. Yeah. But as a body of Christ, we all play a part. Yeah. It ain't no big eyes and ain't no little you. We got to pray for one another. Amen. We can't leave our brothers and sisters uh, uh, down, sick, and we going on about our own business and we don't care for one another. Amen. Because that's not the love of God. Amen. I dwell the love of God in you when you set up your bowels of compassion toward one another. Yeah. But we got to recognize the devil. When he, we got to know where Satan's seat is. Yeah. One thing about the devil he's trying to do, he's trying to divide the children of God. Right. He's trying to get us to fight and divide one another yeah. because he know if he can get us separated, if yeah. he know if he can get us fighting one another, he know he can pick us off one by one. Right. And after a while, it won't be no church. Yeah. But one thing about it, we got to recognize that we got leadership, we got to follow leadership, and it comes from leadership on down. We got to stay in our lane. But too many times, we get out of whack, we get out of lanes, we get confused, we get to trying to do things that we shouldn't be doing, we trying to act like people that we shouldn't act like. I begin to think about when, when our David... Uh, Daddy began to tell him to go down there and take that cheese and that bread or whatever to his brothers. Uh, David began to be obedient. In other words, it was a symbol of humbleness. It was a symbol of, I ain't finna do that. I ain't finna do this because his brothers didn't recognize him that much uh, because he stayed on the backside, yeah. always tending the sheep, yeah. always out there probably in the fields, uh, in the heat, yeah. doing things, but he never complained. Yeah. He was like the type of Christ. He never complained. That's what you call humbleness. That's what you call obedience. Yeah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, so many times uh, we can have leaders to tell us to do something. And I, I, I ain't finna do that. I ain't going that route. We can say have a leader tell us, uh, go take this here, go take I ain't got time. Yeah. When God can tell us to do something, I ain't got time. Yeah. Pastor can tell us to do something, we ain't obedient. We don't want to do what pastor tell us to do. Tell us don't go out uh, and bring the church to an open shame. Uh, but we make up in our mind, I'm going to wear what I want to wear. I'm going to look at what I want to look at. I'm going to go where I want to go. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to say what I want to say because this is my life. But the devil is a liar. This ain't your life. It don't matter how you look or what you got on. The Bible say you bought with a price. You no longer your own. You didn't die for yourself. You didn't stretch your own wide. You was on your way to hell when Adam and Eve sinned. of sinful flesh and he died for me he died for you I'm telling you he went through so much he even died for the very ones that pierced him in the side he didn't say Lord send them to hell for the things that they doing he said Lord forgive them for they know not what they do hey glory oh but we living in a time when we got unforgiveness in our heart we don't want to forgive the next man what they done to me, but he said, the disciples said, how many times 
Shall I forgive them? God, I got to keep on forgiving them. And they keep on stomping over me. They keep on talking about me. They keep on walking over me. He said, you got to forgive them. Seventy times seven. Woo! That's a lot of time. I'm going to let you know. I believe the reason Jesus said that. Because he know you weren't going to go that far. Really hear that? 
His, his brother talking about, you just come down here to be noticed. You want to see. And I'm quite sure you've been working all day. And then they're telling you to come do this and do that. And God telling you to go over there and pray for somebody. God telling you to do this and you don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to get up. But one thing about David, David, David jumped up his dad and had to tell him. He had to keep telling him. He said, go on down there and take that stuff to your brother. They need it. Hey, glory. He was so humble. One thing about it, when God tell you something, he ain't telling you for nothing. You might not want to do it. You might not feel like it. And one thing I feel like in the 25 years that I've been saved, your flesh ain't going to never want to do the things of God. Your flesh going to always buck against Holiness and righteousness. Your flesh is going to always buck against the things that God wants. But the Bible says, David went on down there and took it to his brother. But when he got there and he found out that it was a battle going on. He found out that it was a call. So many times, God had you to do something you don't realize. Hey, you be like, why God got me doing all this? You don't realize it's a call. God tell you to take somebody a pie or take them a pair of socks. But when you get there, they say, God showed you me in a dream. He showed me you in a dream that you was going to come and bring me that pie that I can get prayer. And, you, and when you miss God, when you be disobedient, you don't realize it's a call. It's a cause. And it's a battle going on with somebody. It's a battle going on with your brothers and sisters. God be telling you, get on the phone. Call them and see what's happening. Hey, forget about all that foolishness that people are. They're trying to put in your heart. Keep your mind stayed on me where I can talk to you. Because there's a call. I ain't got you here for nothing. Hey, glory. But I got a work that I want to do on the inside. When he got there, he realized it was a cause. He realized that there was a battle going on. And we got to realize as saints, there's a battle going on. And this battle that's going on now, it ain't got nothing to do with each other. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Man, there are principalities now. Everybody feeling it. Everybody that's saying they need to believe in demons and devils and all that, they feeling it now. Even the atheists can see. Glory. Glory. Bible says he went on down there. Good God Almighty. When he went down there, even the main man saw the one that commanded all of them. So many times we'll go to places and we'll get hooked up to leaders. We won't thank God for a praying leader. We won't thank God for people that will preach the word and keep your flesh on straight street. That you can be blessed. That when you go through trials, you can come out. Because I realize, hey, glory, you fighting a giant. You fighting a giant. You fighting giants. And if you and be honest, you fighting giants. It don't matter what you look like, how much you smile. I know that long as you in this flesh, it's something fighting against you too. You might as well be honest. There's giants in your life. And you say, what is a giant? A giant is something that's bigger than me. Hey, glory. I'm telling you, Goliath, he was bigger than David. He was bigger than Saul. Even though Saul was a big man, and they begin to run. Some of us, we running from situations because we can't have it. We giving up on God. People committing suicide. People killing their own children. They jumping off of bridges. They running children in the water. Hey, glory. Because the giant is too big for them. We ain't got no time. They be fighting each other when we fighting these giants. We fighting giants today. I heard Mother Betty say, you can't run with the, with the footman. What you going to do when the horseman come? I'm going to let you know the horseman ride right now. Hey, if you can get, get your mind spiritual in this spiritual battle when David got down there. And they begin to look at, at the lion. And all of them got fearful. Like some of the men and women in the church today. That have backed up from prayer. That have gave up on God. Because why this happened to me. Why I got to go through this. Why are my children acting like that. God you ain't came through yet. But the Bible said. They that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew them. 
they'll slip, they'll mount up with wings as an eagle, they'll run and not be ready, they'll walk and not faint, oh, but people don't want to wait, they like a, they're a generation, a microwave generation, you want what you want right now, but the devil is a liar, you can't have your cake and eat it too, you got that weight on him, you got that weight on him, cause when you wait, he ain't you die. He's a God. If you seek him, he'll come to your rescue. Look at your neighbor and say, wait on it. Wait on it. Woo. I'm a living witness. Hey, can I get a witness up in here? That we serve a God. That no matter what your children get in, no matter what the lion come in your life, God will make you
He wasn't looking at that. You know who he was looking at? He was looking at what he had used before. So many times, hey, we come in here, we hear somebody else praying, and we want to pray like, I know we are, you are. And you don't realize God gonna hear your prayer too. If it's from the heart and it's sincere, you ain't got to put on nobody else's arm. You ain't got to act like nobody. You ain't got to preach like nobody. You ain't got to try to sing like Sister Michelle. Look at your neighbor and say, if you can't do no but moan, just say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. And I'm here to let you know that God will hear your prayer. You ain't got to be like Deacon Dorr. You ain't got to be like Pastor Anderson. You ain't got to be like the one next to you. You better use what you use before. In your home. Sister Tammy, you know what worked for you. You know what your prayers did for you. Everybody in here that done went through Brother Robert, different one. My sister, my niece. Yes, Everybody, all y'all, my daughter. Yes, Everybody, all across this platform, all in here. Father said, we are such great cloud of witness. We cloud of witness that can tell the world what God can do. Oh, but we won't testify. We won't give him the praise. We won't give him the glory. You know where he from you from. You should have been dead and in your grave. You should have had AIDS. But you won't tell nobody. You won't go back and let somebody know the kind of God we serve. You ain't got to preach like nobody. You ain't got to pray like nobody else. You ain't got to put on nobody else's arm. Oh. Tell your neighbor, use what you got. Use what you got. Use your prayer. Don't try to pray an hour if you can't do it right now. Just because they pray an hour, just because that sweat running off their head, they might be praying two hours and sweat running off their head. And it's just hitting the ceiling because they got something in their heart. Tell your neighbor, get your rock. Yeah, your rock will work every time. 
There ain't no any kind of rock. There ain't no painted rock. There ain't no rock that glitter on it just look good. Tell your neighbor, get your rock. Get you some of Jesus. Get you a real rock. Get you something that'll do some damage. I'm telling you, that glory. When you stand on Jesus, when you stand on the word of God, I'm here to let you know that the devil can't do nothing with you. All he's doing is just like those lines. He's just trying to taunt your mind. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do that to you. But it's time for you to know who you are. It's time for you to know who you are. David told him, you uncircumcised Philistine. Uncircumcised. Back in old days, to know if you was a child of God. Hey, just like going to the doctor. You know when he had them little boys? Circumcised. Yeah. Call away that flesh. Yeah. Call away that flesh. Yeah. That's what David was looking at. He said, man, look at here. This is an uncircumcised Philistine. I know he ain't no match for my car. Uncircumcised. He ain't got no power. I'm telling you, the devil, he ain't got no kind of holiness on the inside of him. He ain't got no love on the inside of him. He uncircumcised. And he can't do nothing with the God on the inside of you. That's why the Bible says that you can do exceedingly, abundantly, and above anything you can ask or think. It's according to the power that's on the inside of you. And that power is that rock. And when David picked up that rock and he slung it, the power of God hit that devil in the head and he fell. And glory. And then he cut his head off. Hey, I'm telling you today, God is telling somebody, whatever giant you got in your life, you can cut his head off today. If he bothered your children, you can cut his head off. If your finances messed up, cut that devil head off. Let it know. Hey, glory. That I'm standing on the solid rock. Because David knew it wasn't about him. It was about the Lord. It was about Jesus. Everything you do, you don't have to fear today. You can defeat the giant. But you got to use what God has given you. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got everything you need. You got to speak it. You can't be looking at your giants like God did in God. You can't be looking at them. But you got to look at the sit you got to look at Jesus. Not the situation. Uh -uh. We walk by faith, not by sight. Yes. Sight getting us messed up. Yes. Oh, this and that. Day. This and the did that. Yes. Oh Lord, that not happen to that. Yes. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yes. <laughs> it's a difference in being cautious and being fearful. Fear is of the devil. Fear is of the devil. I'm going to say it again. Fear is of the devil. But you know why most people fear? Because they know. When the Bible said that uncircumcised Philistine, Jesus said, no longer am we. Going to the regular doctor, circumcised. He said, because you can get circumcised down there if you want to still be a devil. You can get all the flesh and hair and eyebrows cut off and everything. You still a devil. <laughs> you can have long dresses, nothing on your face, still a devil. Amen. Preaching, devil. On the cake, everything. Amen. Doing everything, devil. But he said, I ain't doing that no more. He said, I'm finna put my spirit on the inside and let the world gonna know that they read. That's why he said that. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Because when God begins to circumcise, you know what he do? He cut that flesh from around the heart. He cut the anger from around the heart. He cut sin from out your heart. He cut malice and jealousy from out your heart. The Bible said the word of God is sharper than in the two-edged sword. Cutting to the bone, to the marrow. Knowing the intents of the heart and the thoughts of man. I'm telling you, it ain't nothing here that won't be revealed. Hey, the whole world know if you say the you ain't say. Because they know you ain't got no business having different fruit on your tree. Hey, glory. What kind of fruit are you? Because right now, it's fruit cocktail everywhere. 
We ain't got to go to Walmart no more. It's mixed fruit in the church. Everybody sing. You got all kind of fruit on the tree. Got a little line here and a little blood. A little home muggling over here and a little, uh, you know, singing, sanctification and singing there. We try to hide behind all kind of stuff. But when you read, when God begin to deal with your heart and he circumcised your heart, Man, he begin to get all that evil out your heart. The heart is deceitful and wicked. And who can know it? He know it. But David was able to trust in the Lord. You know why? Because he ain't had any problem. He believed in God. He lived for him. He trusted in him. He humbled himself. He was obedient. He moved when God said move. He did what he said do. He denied himself. And all that is a part of you defeating your giant. You can't defeat your giants with weights and sin. As he said, lay aside every weight and every sin. Last year, before this pandemic came in, so many people I noticed down through the years promised that they were going to do different things. I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to do that. Woo, I ain't doing this no more. Up in the chain thing. So many of us, God allowed things to come in our life that He can get our attention and let us know that you're doing too much for yourself and not enough for me. Come on, That's right. Or you ain't living right. Or this and that. Whatever the, the situation was, everybody know their own oh, yeah. heart. Yeah. But some of us promise so many things. And time God let things get back. You know what? Come back to the same old stuff, same on. attitude, yeah. doing the same thing, saying the same self as way. Still running after the world, still running after yeah. this, still yeah. looking like that, still acting like that, not changing no kind of dress codes or nothing. Yeah. But you know what? what? God said, my spirit ain't gonna always strive with me. Right. I'm telling you, every one of us, this stuff ain't happening for nothing now. Come on, yeah. We so close to the end that y'all don't even realize. Come on. We so close to the mark of the beast. That you don't realize. Amen. Our children are so close to the mark of the beast oh, yeah. that they don't realize. Yeah. But when they're grown, you can't tell them nothing. Right. You got to let them make up their own mind. Oh, All you can do is tell them and go on. on. That's it. Ain't no sense to just try to put up on that because they're going to say you're messing with it. That's it. That's it. I talk to people out there in the world, I talk to different people, and they say this and that. But then God begins to tell me, don't give that that's holy to oh, the dogs. Yeah. You say, God, he called, he called a woman in the Bible, dog. That's right. Yeah. He said, don't cast your pearls before swine. In other words, don't keep trying to tell people nothing. Come on. Because the God of heaven, he made everyone. And he know how to get anybody to him. Yes, he going to do it. Because one thing about it, we might love him. But you're going to come in or they're going to be lost. Yeah. It's going to be simple as that. Because time is winding up. Ain't no time to sit up with foolishness in your mind. Ain't no time to sit up debating about whether you want to be saved. Debating, I'm not ready yet. I'm having such a good time. Because the Bible says when the master had risen up and shut the door, nobody coming in. When Noah shut that door, everything that he was trying to get the attention for 120 years, they were bamming on that ark. And some people finna be bamming on the ark. Spiritually. I'm ready, Lord. God said, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. Because when I gave you a chance, you spit on me. Kick me to the curb. You didn't want no part of me. He's going to say, now I want no part of you. But right now, his arms is wide stretch. See, he's going to look up his feet. It don't matter how people talk about us. I don't care how they try to put us down. You don't do nothing. You don't go nowhere. You don't have no fun. I mean, I have plenty. I just don't do it the way I used to. Because the ways of sin is death. It's death in that part. That's a trick right there. Because what the devil do, he's a, he appeals to your flesh, the things that you want, and that feel good to you. Man, that feel good stuff will mess you up. It feels good. You have the way to seem right. The end of it definitely destroys. I choose life. 
Because I know that if I live right, I don't care who tell me I ain't perfect. Oh, you ain't perfect. You ain't this and that. The Bible says I'm perfect in his eyesight. Because I don't get up practicing sin. I don't get up my mind on sin. My mind on talking about no matter. My mind on doing any kind of stuff like I used to do. My mind now is, Lord, what? I want to please you. And one thing about the Holy Ghost, when you get on track, it'll convict you. Yeah. When you get to the point where the Holy Ghost can't convict you no more, you better check yourself. Yeah. When you get to the point where you always talking about, I ain't nobody standing in church for I ain't know what they talking about, I got my own, you know, thoughts and this and that. You better start checking yourself. Amen. Because you should be doing all you can do to make it in. Yeah. The Bible says if the righteous scares you to make it in. If those that strive as hard as they can scarcely make it in, yeah. well, with the sinner uh -huh. in the ungodly of people. Uh -huh. In other words, they automatically are. Yeah. And the time winding up now, we God taking people out of here. Yeah. Saved and unsaved. Uh -huh. And if I leave here, I'm going to leave here saved. Yeah. I'm going to leave here with my mind on the Lord. Yeah. What about you? All right. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Yeah. If I were you, if I'm not saved, I choose this day who I'm going to serve. Amen. I choose this day who I'm going to live. I wouldn't be persuaded by nobody else. Right. No friends, no good times. All that stuff is a trick. That's right. And the devil embody us with that stuff from the time we're born and make us run after them, make us hold on to it. But that's his trick for stealing your soul. Amen. Feel good stuff. Don't yeah. want to let it go. Yeah. But you got to let it go. Give your life to God. Saints, we can defeat them giants. Yes. But we can defeat them within ourselves. Yes. Use what God has given you. That Jesus that you say living on the inside. Yes. Trust in what he's going to do. Yes. Pray. Talk to him and wait on him. Oh, yes. We got the power. Uh, Speak. Yes, sir. And say this too shall pass. Stand to your feet. Uh, say this too shall pass. This too shall pass. This don't even look at what our children do. All our children doing stuff. Yeah. All of them. Yes, sir. They are. All our children. But you know what? We got to love them. Yeah. We got to keep praying for them because yeah. God love them too. Yeah. Think about it. A lot of them just bound just like we were bound. Yeah. <laughs> I know where I came from. Uh -huh. I came in this church a lot of times, man. I was bound. Yes, sir. I came to church, but I still went out. Only thing I tell people, just come to a time, you got to make up your mind. Don't let it be said too late. Yeah. But don't stop coming. This is the thing. That's it. You're going through, regardless of what the hell in your life, keep staying under this word. Yeah. Stay under the heat. That's Stay it. around the prayers of these saints. Yeah. Stay around the prayers. Don't let the devil tell you they talking about me. Right. Man, we love y'all. Yeah. And we got to love each other. Amen. Who would want to see their loved ones lost? Who would want to see anybody lost and you say you saved? Amen. We shouldn't want to see nobody lost. I'm praying for everybody. I don't care who they is. I'm praying for everybody that God saved and delivered. Yes. I mean, look here. I was a wretch undone. I was bound. I thought I'd never be saved. But I stayed in here. I stayed in here. Yes. One day my deliverance came. Yes. You stay on here and don't listen to other people, your deliverance going to come. Amen. Whatever you bound with, it's going to come. Yes, if you stay in here and you hop between two opinions, you need strength. Stay under the word. Yeah. You already say, you know you still need strength to make it. Stay under the word. Yeah. Listen to the word. Don't buck against it. That's it. Listen to your leader. Yeah. Pastor. Yeah. Old pastor. The other yeah. preacher. Don't buck against the word. Because we clean through the water to wash another word. Yeah. And we get strength from one another. Yes, sir. Every word that comes from every preacher. It's going to be needed in these times we live. Mm -hmm. I don't care who the preacher is. If it's coming out this Bible, yes, sir. we better eat it up. Yes, sir. Don't sit around and die sick and call it, that's good and that's bad. It's all good. Sometimes it's going to be great. Sometimes it's going to whip. Sometimes it's going to lift up. Sometimes it's going to reprove. Sometimes it's going to tear down. Yes. But it's all for our making. Yes, sir. I eat it all. But when I come in here and it hit me, I just know what to work on. Yes, I know what to go pray about yes, for me. Sir. That's the way God shows his love. Yeah. He chastises the ones he loves. I'm in the love of him today. Amen. Begin to lift your hands up and begin to just talk to him for a minute. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God, for the time that we're living in, God. 
You told us that these times are coming, Lord, but you're still giving us your word. You're still letting us know, Lord God, that in you, we can defeat every giant in our life. You let us know that every giant that been defeated, it was because of you, not of us, God. You told us to be strong in you and in the power of your might. I just thank you for that, Lord. I give you the praise, I give you the glory, and I give you the honor. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. I can do nothing, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your mercy today, your grace. This world in our home, Lord. So many times you told me saints, Lord, saints is just like we in a motel room. And we begin to hang up our hats and our clothes on the wall and put pictures on the wall in a motel and we know we got to leave there yeah. in a few days. That's the way we get in this world. We get comfortable. We just trying to make ourselves comfortable in this world instead of realizing that our fiction should be on things above. That we should be doing all we can, Lord God, to be ready, Lord, when you take us home. Help us to be ready, Lord. Help us to be prepared, Lord God. That we can be with you one day, Lord God. Help us to do all we can to please you, Lord. And to love one another, Lord. Be concerned about one another, Lord. Pray for one another, God. Lord God, lift one another up, Lord God. Share our access, Lord, the things that we have with those that's in need, God. Help us, Lord, to do all that that you called us to do, Lord God. That when we stand before you, Lord, we know, God, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Lord, I pray right now, God. That when we leave this place, God, you be with us, every one of us. Be with our loved ones, those that didn't make it, God. Lord, shield us from the viruses and, the, and the, Lord God, the things that's in this world, the shootings, Lord God, and the robbers, Lord, and the kidnapping, Lord. Shield our children in school, God, as they start at school back and some start tomorrow. Shield them and protect them, God. Raise them up, Lord. Put this word on the inside. Cause your people, Lord, begin to teach their children at home the word of God. That they, are, Lord, know who to trust in, Lord. They'll know who to live in. They'll know who, Lord God, to please, Lord. Lord, don't let us, Lord God, get caught up in this world. But, Lord, you told me we got to separate ourselves. Separate ourselves, Lord God, from the unfruitful works of darkness. And you'll receive us, God. You'll protect us. You'll keep us. Help us to do it, Lord, even when we're weak, Lord God. Give us strength. Those that's weak, Lord God, and battling, Lord, addictions and troubles, Lord God, and things they're going through in their mind. Lord, I pray their strength right now. I pray that you're helping each and every one of them, young and old, God, whoever they may be, God. Lord, strengthen, Lord God, our children, Lord, our brothers and sisters, naturally, Lord, so spiritually, so strengthen, God, in the name of Jesus, your people. Strengthen our pastor, Lord God. Strengthen our co-pastor. Strengthen our leaders, Lord God. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, Lord God. The whole fivefold, Lord God. Strengthen, Lord God, those that's on the field, God. Supply every need, God, that your work will be done, that souls will be saved. Help us to be led by you, Lord, in everything we do, God. Help us to examine ourselves, Lord, to see whether we be in the faith, God. Help us, God, oh, Lord, to know, God, to awake, Lord God, that you're soon to come, Lord. Purify our hearts, Lord. Purify our mind, God, because only the pure in heart is going to see. And for that, we give you praise. And we give you honor. We pray for our little babies, the little children, Lord God. Keep us healthy, Lord. Keep them healthy. Keep them healthy, Lord God. Keep them healthy. Keep these mothers healthy, God. And they can take care of their children, their fathers, Lord. Keep them healthy, Lord. Go in our homes, God. Lord, help us to oil down our homes, Lord. Help us to anoint our windows and our doors, Lord. I want to let anoint, Lord God, our ears and our eyes, God, that nothing will enter into our gates, God. Help us to anoint our premises, Lord. Pray when we leave in our cars, God. Help us to keep our minds stayed on you, Lord God. Because the devil is going about to and fro, seeking who he can take out, Lord. But Lord, you have given us greater, such great and precious promises that we we'll just hold on to you, Lord. And we we'll just trust in you and do what you say, God. And for that, we thank you. And we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fears 